It's September the 7th, 2003. We're in the collecting area at Goodwood at the revival meeting. And we're about to do the Sussex Trophy race, which is uh, the historic sports car race. Now, I'm about to break all the rules. Not the rules of motor racing, but certainly the rules of broadcasting, because this is not intended to be an entertainment. We're not going to be switching to cameras on the outside. All I want to do here is to show the race from the driver's point of view from start to finish. Now this is a 1960 Ferrari. It's a 246S Dino and it's a unique car. Uh, it was a works racing car in its day and it was driven by Wolfgang von Trips and Phil Hill and Pedro Rodriguez with great success. Um, well, Rodriguez didn't have that much success, but the other two guys did. But it's an absolutely fantastic little car. It's based on the Ferrari Formula One car of the late 1950s. It's the only one of a handful of 246S Dinos made that has the independent rear suspension, like the 59F1 car. And it's also the only one with a rather interesting aerodynamic body, quite an experimental thing with a little tail flip on the back. And it works really well. It's just a 2.4 litre engine, probably produces about 230 brake horsepower, little V6 up the front, you can see the top of the carburetors there, uh, and what I'm doing at the moment is just following that Daimler dart around, this is the formation lap to come onto the grid, so I'm just looking at everything around the circuit, the condition of the circuit, and just thinking about the race ahead and planning out what I'm going to do. Looking for anything unusual, if you like. But I haven't seen anything at all. We're just cruising along behind him. I've just tried pushing it a little bit through St. Mary's back there, just, just to get the, the feel of the car to make sure that it's all okay. Get a little bit of warmth into everything. Check all the instruments and keep calm. But if you want to know the truth about what I'm really thinking now, it's what I've been thinking in every race I've done since 1968 when I started, which is, what on earth am I doing here? Oh, God, well, I'll just do, well, I'll just do this one more. I'm not enjoying this bit at all. It's not a pleasure yet. In fact, I'm feeling quite tense, but I've trained myself to breathe properly because that's going to make the first lap better. And I've also just trained myself to calm down a little bit. So here we are just arriving and being shown to our slot on the grid. Note the fabulous scene at Goodwood. Everyone dressed as if it's about, well, nearly half a century ago. Quite an incredible event that Lord March has put together. It's just, just wonderful. So now, switch off. And just sit and wait for a bit. There'll be some boards shown to so show how long it is before we go for the start. Then a man will go up the steps on the right there. He'll wave a green flag. We can just do a little practice start and go round slowly, form up on the grid. And uh, the actual start will be, unusually, in the traditional way, with a Union Jack. Now, we are on pole position, as uh, anyone who knows anything about motor racing might have noticed. We've actually done a time of 126.827 seconds around here, which is an average speed of 99.5 miles an hour. That's pretty remarkable for a, a car that was built in 1960. Just try it in your modern road car if you're there on a track day and just to see how quickly you can go. A, a 126.8 is, is pretty fast. So now we'll just sit calmly and wait.
Just watching it again brings the tension back for me. I'm still not enjoying myself. Right, now I'm beginning to think quite seriously about the start. We'll do a little practice start when we get the green flag in about, by the look of it, something like 30 seconds from the that board that man was carrying. I can see someone climbing up that uh, little rostrum there. He's picking up the green flag. Now the thing is, that in this field, this car has a relatively small engine. And we know that although we're on pole position, even the most brilliant start will leave us overtaken. No one's overtaking us at the moment because this is just the, uh, the green flag lap coming up to the start. Now that little practice was quite good, I'm pleased with that. Uh, let it go at about 5,600 RPM, just balance the throttle pretty fiercely off the, off the clutch. And now we do have a quite a good serious look around the circuit. It's very important not to go too fast now because I don't want to sit on the grid for ages waiting for the tail enders to catch up before they send us off. So just back it off a bit, but really have a good close look at the circuit now. This is Ford Water, which is very nearly flat in top, very, very quick corner. We're now coming up towards the right hander leading into St. Mary's. This is where this particular car is really outstanding. Just on the left there is where Sterling Moss had his accident, of course over 40 years ago. Here's the left at St. Mary's. And notice the fields there. Lord March makes sure that the agriculture even looks as it would have done in period. This is Lavent Corner, named after Lavent Village just down the road. I think the subsoil has subsided a little bit there over the years because it's slightly off camber now. Years ago, it, I'm sure it was uh, not quite so um, falling away from you. So you, you need to be careful there. It's quite a tricky one. This is just a little kink on the main straight, and this is where we'll be getting maximum speed, 8,000 RPM in fifth, um, 140 miles an hour or so, something in that region. Now we come down to Woodcut. And I'm backing right off just to keep everybody gathering up close behind me, watching the mirrors every now and then, just making sure that they're, they're coming in tight. You can see Woodcut here is a double apex corner. You, there's a little bit of a right into it, and then the main corner follows after that. And there's a short sprint up to the chicane and we're just creeping along now all's well with the car everything's okay the shorter time I'm sitting there with my foot on the clutch the better now this chicane looks quite daunting in days gone by it was made of bricks of course it's all polystyrene now so if you hit it you just get a nice big bill to replace the polystyrene chicane coming up to the start. With any luck we won't have to sit there for more than about 30 seconds. And I'll just keep quiet now and let the start take place.
Well, not bad, I was thinking. I just slightly fluffed it into second, which is a bit irritating, but I got away quite well, but still, as you can see, I just managed to repass Barry Williams there. Uh, but to see what happens here, wow, just look at the performance of that. That's Gary Pearson in uh, Nigel and Naomi Webb's D-Type. And as you can see, it's a pretty handy motor car. Up front is Peter Hardman in the DBR1. That's the actual car that won Le Mans in 59. Uh, and then uh, there's the Lister Costin of um, Julian Bronson in second place. And I'm just letting Gary know that I'm quite interested in getting back in front of him again fairly soon. Out of Lavent onto the main straight, coming up to the fastest bit, you'll see those two cars immediately in front of me do pull out quite a big gap. They're just more powerful. So I'm thinking at this stage, don't lose heart. You're in fourth place. Everything's okay. Don't be demoralized is what you must tell yourself at this stage. Gary's weaving around a little bit, but uh, it is a very, very powerful car, that. So that's the first lap completed. And I'm about three seconds behind Peter Hardman, who's leading. Now, through Magwick, Gary doesn't pull away from us there. He'll pull a little bit here, but not much. Now, we come up to Fordwater, and the Ferrari is just so much better there. Right, we're going to have a go at him. He comes back at us, but a couple of wheels on the grass. We're not having that. We're through. We're up to third place now. And we've got to try to track down Julian in his lister. Now, I might say all these guys are really top-class drivers. They've all won a lot of races. Uh, they're well-known guys, and they don't muck about. But I noticed there, it's quite interesting, Julian missed the apex by a bit so that uh, fills me with hope that he might not be uh, too much trouble when the time comes to it but uh, to have a go at him but uh, as I say he's a very very accomplished driver and getting by is not to be taken too lightly you have to think it out I find most encouraging is that Peter's not pulling away too much. We're still within touch. Uh, we're actually a bit nearer to him than we were last time, just over two seconds behind, I notice. Right now, my suspicion is that I'll be able to have Julian after Ford Water and before St. Mary's. He has to break way before we do it. We've got a much more nimble car. He's not driving badly. He's not driving slowly. We just have a machine that's better there. His is quicker on the straights. Ours is quicker there. And uh, just straight through it. Just looked too easy. Now, there's Peter. He's good in that Aston. He's a couple of seconds ahead of us. And we now have to get down to the hard work of dealing with uh, this situation. I know that in practice he was one and a half seconds slower than I was, but I'm not taking that too seriously. I know he can go faster in that car, so this is not going to be a pushover. What I've got to start working on now is observing very closely the differences between his car and my car for speed at every point on the circuit. You see here, last lap, we just piled it on and, and passed Julian there. We didn't catch Peter. We do catch him here, though. That surprises me. And it's very encouraging. 
gained on Peter through St Mary's in a way I didn't really expect. Through Fordwater he was as quick as I was. Now we're coming down to Lavin and we're up nice and close now so we'll start uh, giving him the idea that we would rather like to be in front. Now this is interesting too, the Ferrari tuck out from behind him and can actually get up alongside. Now there's no way I'm going to pass him there. A, there's no way Peter's going to be taken for a sucker that, like that, but we're on the outside of the corner. All I was doing there was just seeing what my car was like and letting him know that I'm quite interested in putting him in second place. But I know he's not going to be demoralised because uh, he's a pretty tough nut. But we'll just keep the pressure up. Even I don't really think we're going to go through here, but we'll just give it a try. Hear the two engines together when they're alongside each other. It's fabulous Aston Martin and Ferrari racing engines of that period. So I wasn't really trying to pass him there, but uh, just letting him know. Now you see I'm not gaining on him at this point, and he's covering that final approach into St. Mary's in a perfectly acceptable, reasonable way. So, no point in uh, hounding him here too much. Let's just watch for a bit. Well, the Ferrari is definitely better through Lavin. This, I think, is going to be our best chance. See, I got sort of halfway up alongside, I got my nose alongside him in his car that time. I need to be just a couple of feet further ahead. Wonderful to watch those slides on the Aston there. What a superb car. And it's being perfectly driven too. Now we're coming up already to some back markers. This could give me an opportunity. Go straight through there, that's no problem. Ah, I see a hope here. And we're going faster, he had to back off, but Peter, perfectly legitimate, saw that coming and just put his car in the way. You wouldn't think that these two are worth about five million quid put together, but uh, uh, there's no risk of us hitting each other, I think. Just look at that. Isn't that a fabulous sight? Better in the mirror though, really. Right, now this time I'm going to really just try to get that just two feet further up inside him here. Now we'll see. both engines screaming along and we're on the inside this time we've got him now the thing to do here is to make sure he doesn't get an opportunity to come straight back at us while he's right behind us come out of here and we now need to put in two or three really cracking laps if we can just to open up a bit of a gap. This is not much steering wheel movement on, on the Ferrari. You, the constant little adjustments and little movements, but no vast great slides, and it, it will go into that if you wanted to. You can throw this car around all over the place. But it is quicker. Just watch this back marker here. That's Ernest Nagamatsu in Old Yeller. But he was behaving himself, kept well to the left and signaled me past. Now, it is actually quicker, I was saying, to drive this car without getting it sliding around any more than you really have to. the rev counter just about up to maximum revs in top before we break. You can 
see the uh, lapse completed board on the right there. It's always a bit worrying if you're leading the race. You wonder whether it's up to date or not, but it said seven that time, I think. I've got to pay attention to back markers very carefully now because they might give Peter a chance. He's only just about a couple of seconds behind. That guy was good. Compromised us a little bit, but not too bad. Whoa, now, that surprised me. The car did not go onto the apex and got a bit crossed up coming out. And I got to work out what that was. It didn't feel as if I made a mistake. I wondered whether the tires were getting a bit warm. It just didn't want to turn in and, and take St. Mary's as well as it did before. So I'm going to be careful there next time. Just turn in a little bit earlier, a little bit more gently. Tires do get warmer in, in, in these races and some of the bigger, more powerful cars get into quite big trouble and the overheating tires will slow them down towards the end of the race without any doubt at all. The great thing about the nimble little Ferrari is that even though you can notice a slight change in its uh, behavior, it doesn't really affect its speed because it's light and it's not caning its tires. It's a, it's a very good chassis. That guy was good, straight through. And notice each time just coming out of Magwick there's a rise in the revs, so there's quite a pronounced bump there. And there's Ford Water, I could swear I take it flat, but it never is quite. I notice. Just a very slight difference of care in turning in St. Mary's that time and it was okay. This is the other DBR1 I think by the look of it is that I think that's Wolfgang Friedrichs in his car. We're just lapping him of course. Okay well after that little bit of excitement on the lap before around St. Mary's we've got a nice pattern but Peter is still only two or three seconds behind I can see him there all the way one little hiccup and he'll be there so we just need to keep this pattern flowing along nicely Exactly what we want. Clear road. This is beginning to look like the fastest lap of the race for me. Just keep it flowing. Peter's still hanging on there. We did put in some pretty fast laps back there. We're in the very low 28s and I was uh, impressed to see that he maintained the same gap. He didn't drop back at all, so we can't relax at any moment. Just got to keep at it the whole way. bit more
more steering mo movement around there than there was in the early stages of the race still. Uh, it's fine, we're, we're still just as quick, but I'm having to move the steering wheel around more through St Mary's than I was in the first few laps of the race. It's not a problem, just need to be aware of it. That's okay, that won't compromise us at all really. So far these guys in front look fine, um, what I'm looking for at this stage is to see whether there's any slightly wayward driving going on so that when I do actually catch them they, they might cause some trouble but ah, they're catching up two other guys here, this could give Peter his big chance. And that's okay, we'll just have him but going into the chicane. And Ernest Nagamatsu's knocked that side of the chicane down with his old yellow. So that was a slightly tense moment there. And I've been... had to be cautious there. I've been slightly compromised. But looking back, I can see that it's even worse for Peter. So I can breathe a sigh of relief and just press on now. He's been slowed down just as much as I was. Someone moving on quite well here by the look of it, although he's in a slower car. He's missed the apex there and he's got a bit sideways, but he obviously knows what he's doing. I'm not sure who this is, but that's fine. He didn't worry me at all. These two could hold me up a little bit, but we've got about three seconds over Peter now, and I don't think there's anything to worry about. We just need to get smoothly through. Last lap now. Slip up the inside half the apex there, that's it. Nearly all of them have to slow down there more than the Ferrari. It is just the most wonderful car. Yellow flag. couple of cars off on the left there by the look of it, but no concern to us, they weren't going to affect what we were up to. I'm now just going to make absolutely sure of winning this race, because I can see that Peter is 
between two and three seconds behind still and there's no way you can make that up now so no leery stuff just make sure we uh, get the result acknowledge the team waving on the side and that's that Cruise in now. That webbing armband, I, I wear those. They're, they're mandatory in the United States in open cars. Uh, they clip into your seatbelt harness so that in the event of going upside down in the car, your arms don't fly out any more than they absolutely have to. Uh, I've never ever noticed that I've got them on while I'm driving and I just think that they're a very good safety idea. I don't know why more British drivers don't, uh, don't use them. It's a very simple idea that could save you from breaking your arms. Uh, this time you remember all the marshals, all the enthusiasts there. Obviously I've got a very big head at the moment, but that's not just what I'm on about waving to them. It's acknowledging them, their enthusiasm. I hope they've enjoyed it. But once again, it's just astonishing what Lord March has achieved in getting this meeting running. It is the most beautiful thing. cruise slowly up and I might say that I've been enjoying it since about 15 seconds before the start it's been fantastic it's just that tension beforehand makes me feel sick <laughs> Well, not being rude, there is Marilyn Monroe, of course, but the photographers have asked me just to stop for a moment. Doesn't last long your moment of glory, does it? There, she, she, she's off to see Peter Harbin now for some reason. And John the mechanics turned up with a bottle of water for me, which is uh, probably just what's needed. Now that looks as if I'm having a bit of a, a row with that chap. It's actually the complete opposite. I was just telling him that his car is absolutely fantastic.
at this moment, I think for the last few minutes, I've been out of the picture and talking to the other drivers over at the side. That's the car that's the start. Now we're back here. We're going to have to get in, start it up, take it round to the Park Fermi, wave to the crowd again. Just going round now, we just think about anything to report to the team. Nothing occurred in the race for me to comment on to the engineers about the car at all. It just ran faultlessly, but uh, this is just one last opportunity just going round to think, well, is there anything? Are all the gauges reading the right things? Just, just think over that sort of stuff. Julian round now. He finished uh, fairly close third behind Peter. Funny looking thing that uh, Lister cost embodied thing. It was an attempt at aerodynamics that was probably quite efficient but just too big I think. Brian's own so-called knobbly design I, I suspect was rather better but uh, it's certainly a magnificent car. is it, the race. As I say, well as I said at the start, no professional TV producer would, uh, would allow that out at all, but uh, it was more of a perhaps a, an academic exercise just to, just to see what the race is like. That was the race from my point of view, and if you have been, thank you for watching it.
face, Kenny. Now that that Peter Harmon is a hard man to keep behind you, isn't he? Well, yeah, he's he's, he's a, a very very well, he's an outstanding ace driver. Uh, As you are. Uh, well, <laughs> I've, I've been at it a long time. <laughs> but you but enjoy yourself. We're all mates. We know each other very well. He drives the CBR one absolutely on the limit. He drives by the book like a professional driver would. And, uh, Seems to work. Although those those big brutish 